Why Nobel for mRNA technology? Viruses have coexisted with life since its evolution. Scientists believe that viruses may have played a role in the evolution of life by transferring genes between different organisms. Viruses are tiny non-living particles that contain genetic material and a protein coat. They can only reproduce inside living cells. Viruses can infect all types of cells including bacteria, plants, animals and humans. Viruses have been around for billions of years. The oldest known virus fossils are over 3.5 billion years old. Viruses have adapted to infect a wide range of hosts and they continue to evolve new ways to evade the immune system. Viruses can cause a variety of diseases including the common cold, the flu, AIDS and COVID-19. Some viruses can also cause cancer. Despite the dangers they pose, viruses are also essential to our life. Viruses play a role in regulating ecosystems and in the evolution of life. For example, viruses can help to control populations of bacteria and other microorganisms. Viruses can also transfer genes between different organisms which can lead to new traits and new species. Overall, the benefits of viruses outweigh the risks. Viruses play important roles in the human body and in the ecosystem. So what role do viruses play in shaping the human immune system? Well, viruses teach the immune system of the human body from birth to death. However, it's essential to clarify that viruses do not actively teach the immune system in the same way a teacher instructs a student. Instead, the immune system learns to recognize and respond to viruses through exposure and experience. The immune system is a complex system that protects the body from infection. It is made up of a variety of cells and molecules that work together to identify and destroy foreign invaders such as viruses and bacteria. When a person is exposed to a virus, the immune system produces antibodies against the virus. So friends, antibodies are proteins that can bind to the virus and prevent it from infecting cells. The immune system also produces memory cells which remember the virus and can quickly produce antibodies if the person is exposed to the virus again. The first time a person is exposed to a virus, the immune system may take several days to produce enough antibodies to fight off the infection. This can result in illness. However, if the person is exposed to the same virus again, the immune system will be able to quickly produce antibodies and prevent the infection. So viruses help teach the immune system by exposing it to new pathogens and forcing it to adapt. Well, this process of adaptation helps the immune system to become more effective at fighting off the infection. And as a person ages, the immune system weakens. This makes them more susceptible to infection, including the viral infection. However, the immune system still learns from exposure to viruses, even in old age. So why do we need vaccines if viruses have evolutionary benefits? Well, while viruses do have evolutionary benefits, they can also pose significant risk to human health. So vaccines are vital tools in maintaining public health, preventing diseases, protecting vulnerable populations and ultimately saving lives. Now, what if there is no vaccine against a virus that has grown on to be declared a pandemic across the world? Well, conventional vaccine development usually takes several years due to the complexity and thoroughness of the process. However, in the case of COVID-19, the urgency of the pandemic necessitated a faster response. And this response came in the form of the development of mRNA technology. The fact that we are alive and communicating here is due to mRNA technology. And the story doesn't end here. mRNA technology is now being utilized in creating new vaccines and therapeutics for a range of diseases such as TB, Dengue, foot and mouth disease, Nipah and Zika. Additionally, it is being employed in the development of novel treatments for infections and cancers. It is for this reason that the 2023 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine has gone to scientists Katalin Carrico and Drew Weissman, whose work enabled the development of mRNA vaccines against COVID-19. 
Let's discuss how the groundbreaking findings have fundamentally altered the scientific understanding of the human immune system and how vaccines can be developed at an exceptional speed. Well, dear viewers, I'm Lipakshi Kurana from Study IQIS, and you're about to embark on a journey of learning like no other. So sit back, grab a pen and paper, and get ready to be inspired. Well, Katalin Kariko was born in 1955 in Zolnok, Hungary. She received her PhD from Zegets University in 1982 and performed postdoctoral research at the Hungarian Academy of Sciences in Zeged until 1985. In 1989, she was appointed assistant professor at the University of Pennsylvania, where she remained until 2013. After that, she became vice president and later senior vice president at BioNTech RNA Pharmaceuticals. Since 2021, she has been a professor at Zeged University and an adjunct professor at Parelman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Drew Weissman was born in 1959 in Lexington, Massachusetts, USA. He received his MD PhD degrees from Boston University in 1987. He did his clinical training at Beit Israel De Cornes Medical Center at Harvard Medical School and postdoctoral research at the National Institutes of Health. In 1997, Weissman established his research group at the Parelman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. He is the Roberts Family Professor in Vaccine Research and Director of the Penn Institute for RNA Innovations. Well, let's know, so what are mRNA vaccines? Traditionally, vaccines work by introducing dead or weakened viruses into the body. This triggers the immune system to produce antibodies against the virus so that the body is prepared to fight it off if it is infected with the real virus. As technology has advanced, scientists have developed vaccines that use only a part of the virus's genetic code instead of the whole virus. Now, this type of vaccine is called a subunit vaccine. Subunit vaccines are faster to produce than traditional vaccines, but they require cell culture, which can be time-consuming and very expensive. Now, during the COVID-19 outbreak, swift action was imperative to combat the highly contagious and lethal virus. This urgency underscored the pivotal role of mRNA technology. While mRNA technology had been known since the 1980s, it had not yet been refined to a point where it could produce vaccines on a large and effective scale. Rather than administering an inactivated virus to trigger an immune response, this technology employs messenger ribonucleic acid mRNA in vaccines. Genetically, engineered mRNA instructs cells to generate the essential protein required to combat a specific virus. So what contributions did Carico and Weissman make to mRNA technology? Katalin Carico and Drew Weissman made two major contributions to mRNA technology. Firstly, they developed a way to modify mRNA so that it does not cause an inflammatory response in the body. This was a major obstacle to the development of mRNA vaccines and Carico and Weissman's discovery made it possible to develop mRNA vaccines that are safe and now effective. Secondly, they developed a way to deliver mRNA to cells safely and efficiently. But this was another major challenge. Carico and Weissman's discovery made it possible to develop mRNA vaccines that can be used to deliver instructions to cells to produce proteins from a wide range of viruses and bacteria. So what initiates the body's immune response upon injection of mRNA proteins? When an mRNA vaccine is injected into the body, the mRNA enters the muscle cells. Once inside the cell, the mRNA is translated into a protein from the virus or bacteria that the vaccine is designed to protect against. Now, this protein is then displayed on the surface of the muscle cell. The immune system recognizes that the protein is foreign and triggers an immune response. This immune response includes the production of antibodies, which are proteins that can bind to the virus or bacteria and prevent it from infecting the cells. 
Well, the immune system also produces memory cells, which are cells that remember the virus or bacteria and can quickly produce antibodies if the person is exposed to the virus or bacteria again. So the immune response triggered by mRNA vaccines is very similar to the immune response triggered by natural infection with a virus or bacteria. Now, however, mRNA vaccines are much safer than natural infections because they do not expose the body to the live virus or bacteria. Now let's take a look at various steps involved in the immune response to mRNA vaccines. The mRNA vaccine is injected into the muscle. The mRNA enters the muscle cells, then the mRNA is translated into a protein from the virus or bacteria that the vaccine is designed to protect against. The protein is displayed on the surface of the muscle cell, dendritic cells, which are a type of immune cell engulf the protein. The dendritic cells travel to the lymph nodes where they present the protein to other immune cells, including T cells and B cells. The T cells and B cells become activated and begin to multiply. Now, these B cells produce antibodies, which are proteins that can bind to the virus or bacteria and prevent it from infecting the cells. The T cells help to kill the cells that are infected with the virus or bacteria. Now, some of the B cells become memory cells, which are cells that remember the virus or bacteria and can quickly produce antibodies if the person is exposed to the virus or bacteria again. Well, the immune response to mRNA vaccines is typically complete within a few weeks after the second dose of the vaccine. However, the immune system continues to produce antibodies and memory cells for many months or even years after vaccination. mRNA vaccines are a safe and effective way to protect against a wide range of diseases. They're especially important for people who are at high risk of serious illness from these diseases, such as older adults and people with chronic health conditions. So will all the future vaccines be only mRNA vaccines? It is unlikely that all future vaccines will be mRNA vaccines. There are a number of other vaccine technologies that are being developed and used today. And each technology has its own advantages and disadvantages. Well, the mRNA vaccines are a relatively new technology, but they have the potential to be very effective and versatile. They can be developed quickly and easily, and they can be used to target a wide range of diseases. However, mRNA vaccines are also more expensive to produce than some other types of vaccines, and they require careful storage and handling. So friends, other type of vaccines such as live attenuated vaccines, inactivated vaccines, and subunit vaccines have been used for many years to protect people from serious diseases. Now, these vaccines are generally safe and effective, but they not be as effective as mRNA vaccines against some diseases. So it is likely that a variety of vaccine technologies will be used in the future to protect people from any kind of disease. The best type of vaccine for a particular disease will depend on a number of factors, including the effectiveness of the vaccine, the cost of the vaccine and the ease of administration. Let's look at some of the other vaccine technologies that are being developed and used today. DNA vaccines. Now, DNA vaccines work in a similar way to mRNA vaccines, but they deliver DNA instead of mRNA to the body. The cells then use the DNA to produce the protein that will trigger an immune response. Viral vector vaccines. Viral vector vaccines use a harmless virus to deliver a gene encoding a specific protein to the body. The cells then produce the protein, which triggers an immune response. Protein subunit vaccines. Protein subunit vaccines contain a specific protein from the virus or bacteria that they are designed to protect against. The body then produces an immune response to the protein. Conjugate vaccines. Conjugate vaccines are made by combining a polysaturate antigen from a bacterium with a protein carrier. The polysaturide antigen is not very immunogenic on its own, but the protein carrier helps to boost the immune response. Now, researchers are also developing new vaccine technologies that could be used to protect people from a wider range of diseases. For example, researchers are developing vaccines that target specific cancer cells and vaccines that protect against multiple diseases 
at once. So in conclusion, we can say that Catalin Carrico and Drew Weissman made groundbreaking discoveries. These findings fundamentally changed our understanding of mRNA interaction with our immune system. The future of vaccines is bright. New technologies are being developed that could lead to more effective, versatile and affordable vaccines. Now, these new vaccines could help to protect people from a wider range of diseases and improve the health of people around the world. We hope you found this episode as captivating as we did in creating it for you. Until next time, stay curious and stay informed. And don't forget to like, subscribe and follow. See you soon.